So it's Easter. And it's going to start warming up. Amen? Amen. And yesterday was pretty nice. And today I waited for the sun to come up. And I know it did, but I don't see it yet. Immediately after the death, if you have your Bibles with you and you want to open, open them up, I'll be starting in Matthew chapter 27, which says that immediately after the death of Jesus Christ, after he had said, it is finished, And Father, into my hands I commend my into your thy hands I commend my spirit. Right after that, the Bible says that the earth did quake, and great rocks were split apart and tossed to and fro. And the veil of the temple of God, which was in Jerusalem, was torn into two pieces from top to bottom. That would be Matthew um, 27, 51, and 52. We're going to read that. <clears throat> then the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Now I just want to tell you exactly what that means this morning, because when we hear a, the word that says about the veil of the temple, we really don't understand that. And I'm not getting into a lot of detail. I'm just going to explain it quickly. The veil of the, the temple, I would say it'd be kind of like what we would call curtain. And what it was, it was a real, really long curtain, really, really thick. It wasn't something like we know. Um, but it separated the rest of the temple from the Holy of Holies. And it covered the Holy of Holies. And behind the veil was where the presence of God was. And no man could go into past the veil. Okay? No man was allowed to go through that curtain and enter into the place where God lived or where God dwelt. No man could enter in only the high priest. And that was one time a year, and that was on the Day of Atonement. But when that veil or that curtain was torn in two from top to bottom, the way to the presence of God had been changed. Where before, no man could enter in, and, and then all after that, now every man who had been barred before and it was now open to all men. So, after his death, the earthquake, the, the tearing or the, or the ripping of that veil, and many had been seen that had come out of open graves, and many of the bodies of the saints which slept were arose. You have to think about that. I have to say that we always have to think, how does this apply to me? How does it apply to, to us? Because we who are believers, we believe that Jesus Christ did rise from the dead. And what the Bible says, if you believe that he rose from the dead, then you must also believe that who else rose from the dead or will rise from the dead. That's us. That's us. Amen? Jesus had been taken down from the cross and a man by the name of Joseph, jo I can't talk right this morning, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a man, he was like from the Sanhedrin or from the religious powers that be, the Bible said that he was rich, but then he was also a follower or a disciple, maybe not as, as openly as others were of Jesus. And he had went to Pilate and requested of Pilate that he could take the body of Jesus and so that he would have a place to lay him. And so Pilate told him that he could do, do that. And I want you to look at Matthew 27, verse 60, and let's see what that says. And, laid, and, and so he took the body of Jesus, this Joseph did, and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock, and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher, and departed. 
So Jesus' body was, was taken down from the cross, put into the tomb of this um, Joseph, and a great stone was rolled in front of the tomb. Now you have all seen pictures and you can all get a visual on that, but it was more like a cave as we would know it that was big, you could walk in it, and then these huge, uh, tremendous stones would close over the door so that there would be no way that anybody could get in or enter in or animals could get in or something like that. The Bible says that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary saw where they had laid the Lord. They saw Joseph lay the Lord in that tomb. But the chief priests and the Pharisees had asked Pilate, they went to Pilate, and they asked for Pilate to place guards in front of the tomb. Um, because they remembered that they had heard Jesus say one time, when I die in three days, I'll rise again. So they said to Pilate, I'm af we're afraid, we're worried, that now that he's dead and now that he is in the tomb, his disciples are going to come and take his body and then they'll say, see, he rose again. And so Pilate allowed that, that he could place guards or that they would place Roman guards around the entrance of the tomb to watch it so that nobody could come in and steal the um, body of Jesus. And I think of the disciples at this time and I can think and, and ponder on the gamut of emotions that they had to contend with during that time. Now, as, as a person that has a lot of emotional things, I mean, we're all emotional people, right? Some more than others. I think that when I say that, I even include Kevin because sometimes I'm not so sure about him, but I know that he has some emotions. But I think of the disciples um, and how, how they must have been bombarded with all of these thoughts and all of these feelings that would seem to overwhelm them. And I think of the grief, first of all, the grief. Not unlike, I guess, our grief when we lose someone that we love. For the disciples loved Jesus, his, his mother Mary, the disciples, those who were around him, those who had been by his side for all of that time, they had a great love for him. But I think that it was even more than that because these people or these disciples, these men and women, had put their life, entire life, and all of their hope into Jesus. And he had put his life into them. And now they said... And he's gone. And they wonder, what's going to become of me? What am I going to do now? How am I going to go on without him? Oh, Jesus, Jesus, the one who had done so much, who had healed the sick. They had been there. They were there. When he cleansed the leper, or the lepers, they had seen him when he had made the lame to walk and give sight to blinded eyes. And when he touched ears that were, that were made to hear again, and when he would lay his hands on people and they would be healed and they would be made well, they were there in that ship when the ocean tossed them to and fro and they feared for the life. And then they watched Jesus just put up his hands and say, Peace, be still. They were there when he raised Lazarus from the dead. And now he was gone. And I'm sure they just didn't know how they were going to go on without him. Maybe they remembered, or maybe it entered their mind, what the chief priests and Pharisees had said about Jesus while he was hanging on the cross. Because he had said... To, they had said to Jesus, if you be the Son of God, then come down off the cross. If you are the Son of God, like you say you are, come down off of that cross. And then almost if they said, 
He saved others. But he can't save himself. And so the disciples, maybe they wondered, why didn't he save himself? He could have came down off the cross. Why didn't he save himself? And why did he have to leave them? And why did he have to leave them all alone? Not only did they have grief, but they had fear. Great fear. And wondered what their future held. Because the fame of one so good as Jesus had touched the multitudes. The multitudes had heard of Jesus. But even more than fame, if you think about this, now that, that fame of his goodness had been replaced with the fame that follows a great tragedy. Right? We all know that. We all know when it's someone that we know that suffered a great tragedy in their life, when something horrific happens, we know it immediately. It, it could be clear across the country or clear across the world. And great tragedy strikes fear in the hearts of many. But these men and women had placed all their future, all their personal future, into him. So not only did they have this, this grief, but they felt like their future, their future, had been ripped out of them or ripped away from them. Now that he was gone, what, what would they do without him? Where would they go? Because all hope was gone. And also, they were in danger themselves. Because they remembered that he said, if the world hates me, they'll hate you. If the world persecutes me, they'll persecute you too. But, everybody say but. 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 Say it again. But. The Bible says that early on Sunday morning, like Charles was singing about, early on Sunday morning, when the Sabbath day was over, just at the break of dawn, just when the darkness starts to fade away and light starts to push out the darkness, right before you see the orange glow on the horizon, Mary Magdalene and another Mary went to the tomb. Early on Sunday morning came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. Early on Sunday morning. And with them they brought spices to anoint the body for burial. Let's read Matthew 28 verses 2 through 10. And I'm going to read that and just, it's just, uh, I just want, there is so much here that I just want to read it and you listen to it and I, and then we'll go on from there. Oh, did you hear my ankles crack? <laughs> this is out of Matthew chapter 28. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 10 and I can read real fast, okay? And in, in the end... In the end of the Sabbath, as it, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. Now those are the guards that Pilate had put there. They became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not, fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come and see where the, where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. 
And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples' words. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Corinthians tells us that there were many who seen Jesus after he had risen from the dead. But I think of how encouraging he was to his disciples, first of all, to show himself. Now, this is a point here where, where we will look at, at the four Gospels and we'll see a different trail all the way along. But it all adds up that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, and one other place that says Mary Magdalene and the ladies or the other women, that John and Peter, as Charles sing, they went to the tomb, they seen that the tomb was empty, and they seen Jesus, and he spoke to them, and he walked, and he appeared to them in the upper room, to the, to the disciples. He showed them the, the, the nail scars in his hand. He was there, and he appeared for them and for us. See, this is just as much for you today as it is for them, those some 2,000 years ago. Because he said, blessed are they who believe who have never seen. Amen? That's you. We're blessed. We believe, but we've never seen. And I would like to. How many here would like to see Jesus? I would. Amen. I would. But you know what? I'm going to keep believing anyway until I do. Because he says, blessed are those who believe yet have never seen. He told him to go into Galilee and there they would see him. And I say, Amen. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. And that's what Easter is all about. We, we celebrate. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate that the Lord has risen. The grave could not hold him. The grave could not hold him. And I say, according to his word, if the grave could not hold him, then it cannot hold you. Amen? Amen. Amen. The grave could not hold him. And guess what? This is one person right here. The grave won't hold me either. Right? Amen. That's the gospel. That's the good news. That's what we believe. And that's our hope. On the island of Patmos, Jesus came so many years later to John the Revelator and he said to him and you guys help me because you know you who know it he said I am the Alpha and huh thank you I'm the beginning and ending I'm the one which is which was and which is to come the Almighty in verse 18, he said, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of hell and death. Jesus said, I am the one who was alive, who is still alive. I was dead, and now I'm alive, and behold, I have the keys of hell and death. I want you to look at John, the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verses 28 and 29, something that Jesus had said early on in his ministry. Then marvel not at this. Well, wait a minute. Let me, go, let me turn there. Don't read that yet. Hang on just a minute. Almost there. John chapter 5. Okay, I'm just going to read verse 25 to you. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear. How can dead hear? How can the dead hear? How can the dead hear? He said, When the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. 
Now he is saying the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. Verse 26, For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given it to the Son to have life in him. Verse 28 says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all... Now listen to this. This, this is not what he said before. Which all that are in the grave shall what? All that are in the graves shall hear his voice. And verse 29, and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and then they, they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So everyone, he is saying, that is in the grave shall hear the voice of Jesus Christ calling out their name, and they shall rise again. And they shall stand because God has given all judgment to his Son. In John 11, 25 and 26, after, or right before Jesus uh, rose Lazarus from the dead, and he was talking with Martha, and he told Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he said, verse 26, and he said unto her, oh, verse 26, sorry, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Now that is a question that he asked Martha. And today it's the same Jesus in heaven who is still alive, who still asks us the same question. He still says, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? Can you believe this? Amen. Friends, if you have not given Jesus Christ a place in your life, just everybody just close your eyes right now, please, and bow your heads. I want to just tell you how easy it is if you don't know. Not, out, not to yourself, in your heart. If you say, Jesus, come into my heart. I want you to be the Lord of my life. In your heart, then it is a done deal right now. Just, Jesus, come into my heart. Okay. The one who died for all of us is not a weenie. He's all-powerful, all-knowing, always present able to give to you eternal life. And we go on here. I just want to tell you, if you have an opportunity or have taken an opportunity just to say that, I tell you what, the Bible says that Jesus is just the firstborn of many brethren. Amen? Now listen. Well, I can remember when I first came into this church, and I've told you guys this before. And I can remember Kevin, and, and I'm going to have to talk about him, but it's nice. But when I came into this church the first few times, I was kind of like, I wanted to be here, but I didn't. Ever, ever know that feeling? I, right? No, you guys aren't that way, right? You guys have always been good, right? Yeah. You've always been believers. You was born a believer. Yes. Never did anything wrong. Right? right? Never made any mistakes, right? right? That was me. And I always kind of thought I wanted to go to church. I'm, I'm getting ready to close, you guys. I just, I just got it. I always kind of thought I wanted to go to church, but I never wanted anybody to know that I wanted to. Because, my gosh, that grew my image. You know? And John, our pastor, uh, you know, I worked with him, and you guys all know how I did. He'd come around every every day and come stop by in my office and sit down in a chair and talk to me. And I told him every every joke I could, and I knew some good ones. I had a book called the, the uh, what was it called? It was called you remember that book I had? The Tasteless Joke Book. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was called, was the Tasteless Joke Book. And they were tasteless. And I remembered every one of them. Right? There was stuff like taste of like uh, Helen Keller 
jokes. There were Helen Keller jokes. And there were religious jokes. And then there were all kinds of jokes. And they were divided into sections, but I would just talk as bad as I could around him to write them off. And anyway, as time passed, I came in here in this church. And um, I was sitting right over here one day, and I just couldn't believe it. It, it upset me because I couldn't believe it. I wanted to believe it, and that's why I'm explaining this to you. I wanted to, but I honestly couldn't. I, couldn't. I wanted to, but I couldn't. Or there was something in me, I don't know what it was, but I can remember standing right there at the close of the service one day. I said, okay. Jesus, I want to believe like they do. And if you can make that happen, then please make it happen. I tell you, you think there has to be a certain way that things are going to go. And Kevin did the same thing. Oh, I went home and preached to him and preached to him and preached to him. And oh, he hated, oh, he hated me. Didn't you, Kevin? You well, you did. Well, I, maybe he didn't hate me, but listen, he would say, "Just take your church face and go to church." Wouldn't he, Amanda? Remember that? And one day, one day when we were talking, and I said something to him, and he said, "Hey, I've tried. Don't work. Can't believe." And I said, "That's because you don't want to. Because if you would tell that to Jesus, that you want to, but you can't." I guarantee you 100% that you will. Right, Kevin? Right. You think you have a certain scenario that, ha that all things have to happen to all people the same way, and they don't. God will take you right from where you're at. Amen? Right from where you're at. Just as you are. We celebrate the fact that he has risen from the dead. That promise is to us. He said to his disciples, because I live, ye shall live also. Right before he raised Lazarus from the dead, he said, Lazarus is asleep and I'm going to go wake him up. And he says, every one of us, if we die before he comes back, and we are in the grave. We'll wake us from that grave. Amen? Amen.